everyone. My name is Matthew Hunter. My advisor is Professor Simone D'Amico, and we work in the Stanford Space Rendezvous Lab. And my paper is entitled Robust Closed Form Framework for Drag Propulsive Control of Formation Flight. So for an overview of my presentation, I'll first go over my goals and motivation for this work, followed by analysis of the state of the art. I'll look at the optimal hybrid formulation of control, hybrid being the combination of different to drag and propulsive control within the same control window. I will derive uh, bounds on provably Lyapunov stable control. Uh, I'll do a covariance sensitivity analysis of the uh, control method and, and design a uh, Lyapunov stable resolve architecture that is the main outcome of this work. I'll simulate and validate the architecture and then conclude with future work. Spacecraft swarms and formation flight provide additional science capabilities over single satellite missions. They are comprised of smaller, cheaper, often modular space spacecraft that can have uh, enhanced science capabilities such as uh, highly variable focal length or robustness through modularity. Uh, one such mission, which is a primary motivator of this work, is the SwarmX mission, which would be a novel demonstration of three 3 CubeSats and autonomous formation flight. The science mission of SwarmX requires an along track reconfiguration or change in separation of over a thousand kilometers. And this reconfiguration cannot be accomplished using the uh, CubeSat uh, fuel payload um, alone due to CubeSat fuel payload limitations. So SwarmX is going to use differential drag, which is the difference of atmospheric drag between two spacecraft. This provides uh, relative control between two spacecraft at little to no propulsive cost, as maximized over very long control windows. The main problem here is that there is extreme uncertainty in the atmospheric density modeling at pretty much any altitude, and this also becomes exacerbated over these very long control windows. Using differential drag and propulsion together, as I mentioned before, introduces the concept of hybrid control, which which is the combined use of propulsive and differential drag within the same control window. As a visualization, differential drag in its most basic form looks like this, where you have a single spacecraft, this direction of motion, and the deceleration of the spacecraft due to atmospheric drag in the opposite direction. When considering multiple spacecraft with a chief and deputy setup, you can put the spacecraft at a differential attitude setup, which creates a relative acceleration between the spacecraft in the po positive or negative tangential direction. So my problem statement is to design a hybrid maneuver planning architecture that periodically resolves the remaining rototranslational plan to reject maneuver execution, state estimation, and dynamic propagation errors, retains the cost savings offered by differential drag, and runs with a computational efficiency to be used on board CubeSats autonomously. Looking at the state of the art of error rejection, it's pretty extensive, especially in the area of propulsion. Uh, error rejection techniques have been used in flight on missions such as CanX45 with LQR, Prism and TandemX with regularly uh, scheduled uh, cyclic deterministic maneuver planning, and uh, proofs of Lyapunov stability of LTV dynamics models. Differential drag or continuous control, removing the impulsive assumption, uh, has also been demonstrated to uh, provide error rejective properties through LQR, Lyapunov stability, sliding mode control, nonlinear techniques, or even MPC using multiple objectives. The full road of translational problem has also been analyzed using a dual quaternion parameterization and proofs of Lyapunov stability for specialized spacecraft design. The literature lacks a generic, robust, hybrid control approach that offers both provable optimality and guarantees on stability for hybrid maneuver planning. So I'll first go into my optimal hybrid formulation for this work using the state representation of quasi-non-singular relative orbital elements. Relative orbital elements are a uh, nonlinear combination of the Keplerian orbital elements, which means they vary slowly and uh, offer the easy inclusion of perturbations into linearized uh, dynamics, relative dynamics models between the spacecraft. My differential drag force model is simply, assumes that the force of differential drag occurs in a, simply the tangential fraction direction of the chief spacecraft, such that the differential drag maneuver is only in the uh, tangential direction of the chief's RTN frame. 
My problem formulation, as shown on the left, is to minimize the set of maneuvers, uh, the cost of the set of maneuvers, subject to a dynamics constraint. The cost function on the top right shows the control actions U, which concatenate the propulsive and different to drag control actions together, and the selector matrix C, which selects only the propulsive maneuvers as those that have cost. The dynamics constraint uh, has a quantity known as the pseudo-state, uh, which is invariant to the control problem, which is simply the final desired state uh, given the initial state propagated across the control window. This is set equal to the effect of all maneuvers in the control window propagated to the end of the control window by uh, control matrix gamma. It's worth noting here that as a component of control matrix gamma, Control matrix B, which maps control actions from the RTN frame to the ROE frame, actually decouples in-plane, or radial tangential, and out-of-plane, radial normal motion, such that differential drag can be posed as an in-plane only maneuver, given that it's been assumed to be only a tangential maneuver. This problem is uh, conveniently posed because it allows the application of reachable set theory, which is a geometric framework for optimal control problems with normal cost functions and LTV dynamics. Reachable set theory primarily considers two sets, the set S, the set of pseudostates that can be reached by any single action of a given cost within the control window, and set S star, the set of uh, pseudostates that can be achieved by multiple maneuvers of combined costs equal to S. Uh, as it turns out, S star is the convex hull of the maneuvers in S, and therefore the problem is convex. The uh, existence of this convex hull also gives rise to the concept of dominance cases, which are distinct contours of the convex hull that intersect the desi uh, desired pseudostate at minimum cost. This contour is often uh, primarily determined by a specific dimension of the uh, S star, which then drives the, full, the cost of the full reconfiguration. And previous work has found that the minimum cost and optimal maneuver times associated can be found as the solution as this equation below, which is has the desired pseudostate in the numerator, the outward normal of the contour of the dominance case, eta, and then the maximum or the most efficient maneuver that can reach the uh, contour of the dominance case in the de denominator. This application becomes convenient when deriving bounds for provable Lyapunov stability. So considering ideal control, consider a Lyapunov function that's analogous to the minimum cost of the reconfiguration, simply posed as the, um, the square of the numerator of this maximization problem. This Lyapunov function is radial unbounded, positive definite, and continuously differentiable, and therefore is valid. The change in the due to an optimal maneuver differs depending on propulsion and differential drag. For propulsion, you can prove that the change is negative definite, given that an optimal maneuver uh, must decrease the remaining delta V minimum, given that the maneuver has cost. So an optimal maneuver must decrease the remaining cost of the problem. Differential drag maneuvers are negative semi-definite because while the entirety of the differential attitude profile uh, used to uh, minimize the cost of the reconfiguration is optimal with respect to the full reconfiguration, individual differential drag maneuvers do not have that guarantee. And so they are not guaranteed to greedily decrease the delta V minimum of the reconfiguration. To prove that it is asymptotically stable, uh, we can instead apply LaSalle's invariance principle, given the set D, which is a level set of Lyapunov function V and its forward variant, uh, a set of E, which is all states in D where V does not change, which is basically the origin of pseudostate space when the reconfiguration is complete, uh, non-maneuvering, and maneuver effects that do not change the minimum cost of the reconfiguration. The set N is the largest set of invariant states in E, which again is just the end of the reconfiguration and the non-maneuvering spacecraft, which then proves that the origin is globally asymptotically stable for all forms of hybrid control under ideal optimal maneuvering. But as we know, spacecraft do not maneuver ideally. There's always some form of error. So let's consider an arbitrary error applied to this ideal optimal maneuver. And in this way, capture both forms of hardware and dynamic modeling error within a single term. The change in V due to a non-ideal maneuver must 
um, B, negative semi-definite to maintain the convergence properties we prove for ideal control. And with this arbitrary error, we can establish generic error bounds on the error that uh, provide guarantees of convergence, both in the positive and negative sign of the arbitrary error. You can find the convergence is guaranteed if the decrease in the delta V minimum due to a maneuver uh, is no more than two times the act due to an optimal ideal maneuver is no more than two times the actual realized maneuver. So now we want to know what the effects of various hybrid errors are on the maneuver plan itself. The primary sources of error in hybrid control can be divided into linear errors, which provide an analytical translation to final state error and nonlinear errors which require numerical translation through Monte Carlo analysis to a final state error. The linear errors are primarily maneuver magnitude caused by non-ideal thrusters and atmospheric density modeling, and the relative state estimate, whereas the nonlinear errors are primarily caused maneuver by maneuver direction due to incorrect attitude or reference frame, uh, maneuver timing due to non-ideal hardware, and the absolute state estimate from navigation. Uh, a covariance analysis is then conducted on typical uh, maneuver covariances for each one of these categories, uh, where the error sources are modeled as a zero mean Gaussian with a realistic covariance, and then propagated individually to a final state error for various hybrid uh, maneuver planes that are possible for the different in-plane dominance cases. So you can see here that pretty much all sources besides navigation result in a significant deterioration of final state accuracy. There's some variation there as to which ones cause more, but pretty much all of them cause some form of loss. This covariance analysis is insufficient uh, in the presence of off-diagonal covariance terms in the final state covariance uh, ellipsoid, which are present. So um, to completely characterize the error, instead we will use our examined performance bounds, which are defined as the extrema of the covariance ellipsoid along each axis for a given confidence interval. And this is illustrated in two dimensions over on the right. Uh, looking at the results of the performance bounds, the worst case performance bounds over all maneuver plans considered, we can see that the largest contributor to final state error by several orders of magnitude is the magnitude of the differential drag driven by uncertainty in the atmosphere of density. And this allows us to perform big simplification to the error bounds and convergence, where the error bounds and convergence are now strictly dictated by the atmospheric density modeling error. Um, and can be controlled within a maneuver planning resolve architecture through a simple coefficient on the average density output from the atmospheric density model. Uh, in fact, we can simply just use the density lower bound to accommodate the other hybrid error control sources within the control problem in a way that is robust and computationally efficient and really doesn't add any additional computational complexity over the maneuver planner itself. So the resulting Lyapunov stable architecture starts with the input of the final desired state and time and a desired resolve cadence. The initial state estimate is provided by navigation and an average atmospheric density is provided by the atmospheric density model and you produce your first hybrid maneuver plan. Throughout the control window, if uh, you're continuously getting state estimation updates from navigation, if the time since your last solve exceeds the time for the desired resolve cadence, um, you can actually simply resolve the differential drag maneuvers alone for the remaining control window. Uh, again, uh, and resolve those maneuvers specifically uh, while maintaining these convergence properties. This allows uh, error rejection without a corresponding increase in cost and therefore saves the or preserves the cost savings provided by the initial solve in differential drag. To simulate and validate this proposed architecture, I'm considering two validation scenarios. One was reconfiguration one, which is a change in a long track separation while achieving passive safety through EI vector separation. And reconfiguration two, which is a very large change in a long track separation to a string of pearls configuration that may look familiar. 
Um, the two experiments that I'm going to be looking at are verifying the derived uh, Lyapunov stability bounds on optimal control under ideal actuation, perfect state knowledge, and perturbations limited to just the oblateness of Earth and atmospheric drag. I'll then demonstrate the performance of the architecture under realistic operational errors in ideal hardware and a full force orbital environment. For the first experiment, I'm looking at the Lyapunov stability of ideal control. The remaining delta V minima uh, in plane of the control problem of each one of these control problems is shown on the y-axis. And the coefficient applied to the uh, perfect atmospheric density model is shown on the x-axis. The remaining delta V minimum is taken throughout the control window at T naught, a third of the way through the control window, two thirds, and at the last solve of the architecture. So we're expecting a decrease in cost as the maneuver plan approaches its desired state. You can see here that for both reconfigurations, the uh, coefficient of two that was derived earlier is verified for both configurations that show a decrease in remaining cost up to um, and exceeding this uh, two value. Uh, the exception to this in reconfiguration two is due to a dynamic um, modeling characteristic where a singularity occurs when you need to accomplish large changes in a long track separation over short periods of time. And this exacerbates the remaining cost of reconfiguration too. Uh, but this is a characteristic of the dynamic modeling and not of the convergence properties of the solvent. For the hybrid control performance, on the left I have shown the uh, resulting in-plane maneuver cost for various forms of single solves or no feedback, so just a single solve with a maneuver plan, and solves with feedback using various uh, coefficients of atmospheric density. And on the right, you can see the trajectory of the various uh, deputies uh, from their initial state to their final state and the initial state and final desired state in the delta A, delta lambda plane, which is kind of analogous to RT motion or in-plane motion. You can see here that for the no feedback cases in both cases, the addition of differential drag to the problem, uh, as expected, both decreases the cost, the propulsive cost of the control problem, but also massively increases the uh, final state error, especially in the delta lambda direction, which is again this along track separation. Compare this to when feedback is applied for various values, uh, coefficient values, where the cost savings that were found uh, through differential drag are preserved, and the final state errors, especially in the delta lambda direction, are actually better than even the initial solve of propulsive control alone. So we are demonstrating the desired qualities of both retaining cost savings and improved final state error. So in conclusion, hybrid control provides cost savings over propulsive only control and significant savings over long configurations. And the proposed resolve architecture enhances final state accuracy over single solve approaches, accomplishing operational dynamic modeling error rejection without a corresponding increase in cost, and provides superior performance to traditional propulsion despite significant uncertainty of atmospheric density modeling. Uh, it also introduces a kind of interesting balance between cost and convergence through this simple tuning coefficient parameter, where an increase in the coefficient will cause a lower in-plane maneuver plan cost, uh, but uh, tighter bounds or tighter remaining uh, um, uh, uh, space to which your other errors can fit into and still main uh, Lyapunov state. Overall, and especially in terms of the future work, reachable set theory has been shown to simultaneously be able to prove optimality and Lyapunov convergence such that asymptotic Lyapunov stability can be proven for any generic reachable set optimal control solvers. Uh, one major potential issue of this work and a major assumption that's used is that propulsion and differential drag maneuvering can be conducted simultaneously on SwarmX spacecraft with a single propulsive thruster. In practice, this will be mitigated by 
overriding the attitude maneuvering for differential drag with the attitude maneuvers required to accomplish propulsive control. And given the low instantaneous magnitude of differential drag, this should have a limited impact on the final state error that the architecture itself should be robust to in the first place. Thank you. I'll take any questions.